Welcome, everybody, to Midday Magazine for this April 26, 2024. I have your host, James J. Mayloff, here. In part two today, we're going to speak with our friends from Wisconsin Rapids Public School System. We have Craig Boren and Julie from Woodside Elementary joining us. Right now, in the, the kickoff of the show, we have Mike Rage with us, Executive Director at Aging and Disability Resource Center of Central Wisconsin. Mike, good to see you. Yeah, it's good to see you as well. Appreciate the time. It's nice to have you in the studio. Yes. Always good to have you guys in, and we always appreciate the work that the ADRC does for our community. You guys are doing some of the more vital work in this community. We really appreciate everything you guys put in. Uh, Mike, I think one of the ways we can show our appreciation is certainly, you know, um, spreading the word about events at the, at, that you guys host and that. Also volunteering. Uh, volunteering goes a long way, and, and it's a vital part of the work that you guys do over there. It's absolutely essential to the work that we do. So we have, you know, as an organization that serves four counties, you know, we have, we have over 400 volunteers that, that help support our, our, um, the operations that we have. You know, and just kind of in contrast, we have about 80 staff. So, hmm. so 400 volunteers are, are really the essential glue that keeps us in operation. So they do so many different functions, whether that's, you know, helping support our, our meals program, which is probably the biggest function mm-hmm. of, of what they do and getting out and delivering meals to, to people in all the different areas within our counties to helping support some of our office operations as well. Uh, April, of course, is a Volunteer Awareness Month, and uh, we wanted to talk about that a little bit. Yeah. Uh, talking about the impact that volunteers have, while you and I have a, a good 20 minutes to fill here and yeah. everything, Mike, I feel like you hit it on the head right away. <laughs> uh, just by giving us those numbers, I, I'm, you know, I've been working and talking with you guys for years, and I feel like I know pretty well how the ADRC is and the staff you have, and that have talked to almost everybody over there. True. And I, when you gave me those numbers, that's that takes a second to have that register. Uh, the how many people are working there in contrast to the volunteers, it really shows how important it is to have volunteers. Absolutely. I mean, I, again, you know, I can just restate it. I mean, we we just absolutely would not be able to function. You know, you think about, I mean, especially the, the need for individuals with, especially within our meals program, you know, it's not it's not decreasing. Mm-hmm. You know, we definitely have a, an increase in, in that need. And so the only way that we're able to meet that need is through volunteers. Um, you know, our, our budget for staffing is limited. We don't have the ability to have staff um, be doing all those different mm-hmm. functions. So making sure that we have you know, good volunteers and in, in the work that they do is is so valuable for us. And yeah, Mike, um, I, I, let's take a second to talk about uh, like the the people that volunteer and what they get from these things. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and uh, as somebody, and I, I know I've rambled about this many times when you guys join us, but doing Meals on Wheels out in California uh, was one of the greatest things I've ever been a part of. Uh, I, I was I had a fortunate opportunity to do that and be a part of Brothers and Sisters, Big Brothers, Big oh, yeah. Sisters. Yeah. And, and uh, I hadn't done a whole lot of that. I hadn't had an opportunity to do a lot of that kind of work. Young man working a lot myself, didn't have a lot of free hours. Um, I just happened to be doing uh, some radio out there and talking to somebody at their aging and disability and then uh, somebody that was in charge of Meals on Wheels and just kind of happened by coincidence. And I told them, I don't have a vehicle. I don't know if I could do this that well. And they're like, well, we really could use somebody. Where you're at, uh, it'd only take you this long to get there. And Because I wasn't from out there, they showed me how to do it. Walked me through the process yeah. and and got me two routes and so there were two people that I delivered meals to and it's I, I got to film out there I got to meet some pretty famous oh, yeah. people yeah. I got to do some cool stuff I saw the ocean every day That's the awesome. mountains yep. I the biggest memories I have of being out there is delivering these meals I'm not just saying this I cannot stress this enough I awesome. enjoyed that so much I'll never forget those individuals uh, uh, there they impacted me more than I impacted them I think um, I'll carry it with me the rest of my life Life. Not only did it uh, impact me in that way, but it, re- it reminded me of how much of an impact I can make just by doing that. Absolutely, absolutely. And we hear that honestly all the time mm-hmm. in regards to you know our volunteers and just the impact and in, in what they're getting from that experience. You know, obviously they're they're providing a service to a person in need, but you know, in you know the flip side, you know of the. You know, just how grateful people are, just the feeling that you get, the conversations that you have. Mm-hmm. You know, you're getting to know people and um, in, in seeing the value of, of what you're bringing to them is, is so important. And so, yeah, we hear that a lot, that our volunteers are saying, yeah, I'm, I'm providing something to somebody, and I know it's a needed service, and I know that I'm doing it out of need. But what they're giving to me is, is as much or more valuable um, 
as what they're providing. So absolutely. People, uh, uh, time is, is money, they say, and our <clears throat> uh, uh, time is valuable. Our time is valuable, and we all respect that and understand that. So uh, when I, and I keep that in mind when I'm talking about these things. <clears throat> and I cannot think of many things where you get a return on your investment yeah. like you do with Meals on Wheels, where you, your time is incredibly well spent. Exactly. And, and, and it is one of those things where the impact you make uh, you see right away, you see the cause and effect of all of this, but the impact it has on you, it lasts for years exactly. and years. It, it's a really remarkable thing to be able to do with your time. It really is. And you know, and I just, you know, you think about this in the situations, a lot of times the individuals that they're they're providing a meal to, that, that may be the only human contact they have in a day. Yeah. Um, you know, and so it's a person that, that's there to, it's a friendly face. It's somebody that's coming in um, that they trust within their home. It provides them an opportunity to actually have a, a little bit of a conversation, you know, to have some human interaction, to have that, you know, that a little bit of security of knowing somebody's going to be there to check in yeah. on them as well. So, you know, it's so much more than just a meal. Yeah. You know, I think the meal is obviously an, an important aspect, but there's so many more things and components to it and for our volunteers as well. You know, they, again, they get to also have human interaction. They get to have some conversation with individuals. Um, you know, and, and just having that um, back and forth is, is so important. Uh, uh, if you don't mind, Mike, it, uh, we, I want to talk about other ways that people Absolutely. can uh, volunteer at uh, at the ADRC. But just as we're kind of wrapping up the Meals on Wheels conversation yeah. a little bit, um, let's break, the, let's kind of go through this a little bit. Uh, I'll use me as an example because this is something that I've been really wanting to get back into anyway, so we'll just go ahead and do this in real time. Sounds great. Uh, I have an insane schedule, Mike. Yeah. I, I work, I, I, I have this job that I'm at least here until uh, noon, a uh, one o'clock, you know, during the day, um, I leave here and usually have a, t a meeting with uh, the radio station or meeting with teaching. I teach at night a lot. I'm, I'm usually free if I have any free time. It's yeah. usually between one and I'd say two, three o'clock, maybe even four. Um, and and, and I'm, I'm pretty much in this area around here. I can go around town. I've got a vehicle that gets me around pretty good and everything. Um, so, I mean, is there anything for somebody like? like me, would you be able to fit me into that schedule? Would Absolutely. And I think, you know, one thing that we've done within our organization over this last year is, you know, with the volume of, of volunteers that we have, we didn't really prior to have a really dedicated person to help coordinate that effort. It was mm. kind of done, you know, all by office or yeah. kind of random. So we actually developed a, um, a volunteer coordinator position nice. who can really kind of take a look at, her name is Peggy Kurth, and she mm. does amazing work. And, you know, take a look at, you know, hey, this is what my schedule looks like. This mm -hmm. is what I have interest in. Are there areas that I can plug in to your organization? What what may be able to, what may be I be able to do to help support you? And then so that you know it's a conversation and you know you have limited time and there there's different opportunities within that. You know, so there's you know we're we're not gonna turn volunteers away. Um, you know, it may take a little bit of time to kind of figure out how to plug you in, but we're going to try to figure out what that what that looks like to, mm -hmm. to help your schedule as well. Uh, fantastic, fantastic, Mike. I appreciate that breakdown there, and yeah. and, and reminding people as well that um, as, as we're talking about volunteering, we're talking about benefits of volunteering. One thing I don't want to get uh, skate past or anything is we talk a lot about mental health these days, mm -hmm. and uh, the the. The, men, the, the the release that it gives you of endorphins and how good this feels and everything, there really aren't words for. Um, so especially to to that part of this, uh, you know, the mental health aspect of this cannot be taken lightly, how good you feel from that and how much that can make an impact on you and your day. Absolutely. We're speaking with uh, Mike Rhea, Executive Director from ADRC uh, Central Wisconsin. And Mike, um, what are other volunteer opportunities for people at the ADRC? Yeah, you know, so we um, also, you know, have obviously a lot of office functions and a lot of different things that, that go on to our operations. So there are opportunities, you know, with within that um, section as well. You know, maybe it's helping us coordinate, you know, some folders or putting together um, those different functions of, of things that we need or helping to file things or to. So there's a lot of different things that we're looking in regards to our organization. And again, it's kind of dependent on you know, some people have great experience, mm -hmm. you know, in, in bringing in that, that, that previous experience in life. And, and maybe they, they want to use that skill, but they don't want to do it as a, as a job. You know, how can we utilize that to benefit our, 
our customers and our operations. There is uh, senior dining. There is yeah. uh, the Step On program, right. Memory Cafe. There are a lot of opportunities for people to be able to impact and, and to take some time out of their day to put back into the community. Absolutely. You know, you're talking uh, you know, in regards to the Stepping On program. You know, that's something that we've seen. It's a prevention-based program that's trying to help individuals, you know, maintain mobility and have a, we've seen a huge growth in um, interest in that program. But, you know, the only way we're able to really truly run that program all the time is to have volunteers that are our trained leaders. So, you know, um, in, anybody that has an interest in, in that or maybe they've got previous experience, you know, as a, as a previous career, um, to be a, a trained um, stepping on leader, you know, that's something that we are definitely have a, a need for within our community. You bring up a, an interesting uh, point of this, Mike, I think, uh, and, and it's how we think of the average and how we uh, look at and how we project and how we think of the average volunteer. And I think a lot of people think of younger people, and we're yeah. certainly looking for younger people sure. and always appreciate that. Yeah. But we, uh, especially in this area, and you know this better than most, mm -hmm. uh, we have a, a senior, uh, a high senior population mm -hmm. in this area. And I know I, uh, like my non and papa, they, the whole reason we're, uh, I'm up here is my grandparents moved up here and okay. migrated the wrong. Yeah. And uh, my Nana was a nurse oh, sure. and they came up here for retirement. But every day we were up here, my Nana was working like yeah. she, she, you know, especially that generation, you know, oh, they didn't, they, they quote unquote retired, yeah. uh, but they just found <laughs> something else to do. She, she cleaned hotel rooms and things like that yeah, because absolutely. they had friends that ran a hotel in town and stuff like that. Um, to our senior population out there, especially if you're looking for things to do to absolutely. stay active, keep you busy, you, you can be a part of these things as well. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, and, and in quite a few, we have quite a few volunteers that right. are in that senior That's population and, and love that. I mean, they're bringing in such a wealth of experience, you know, and just mm -hmm. different ex different knowledge base that's actually helping us learn um, right. on the job as well. So, you know, um, tapping into that is, is huge. I mean, we'll take volunteers of all ages, but, mm -hmm. you know, I think that it is something within our senior population to, to give back and to be able to provide you know, that's to um, to their community, to be really tapped into that community. And, and this is one opportunity for that. Uh, we wanted to also uh, mention that uh, May, right around the corner, and the ADRC Awareness Month is uh, in, happening in May. Yeah, that's an exciting thing. So, you know, Governor Evers has uh, every May um, declared it as ADRC Awareness Month. You know, and I, I hear this so many times as, you know, from individuals that um, have never heard of an ADRC. You know, what is an ADRC? In fact, I just had a conversation with my mom and a couple of her friends recently, and they're like, you know, I, I, the only way I hear about it is from your mom. You know, tell me, <laughs> tell me what, what you do and, and, and how, what, you know, if we need that, where do we go for that? So, and I say this all the time, you know, I, I, I think individuals, um, you know, they, they hear it when they need it, but I, I want to keep putting that message out there that, mm -hmm. you know, ADRCs are, are that place to go if, you know, it's a one-stop shop for anything related to aging or disability if you're an adult. So, um, you know, we're excited about the, the month of May and, and providing some awareness about this, but, you know, just kind of digging into, you know, all the services that we can, can um, offer within that as well. We have uh, touched on a, a lot of the uh, services as far as Meals on Wheels, yeah. Senior Dining, the Step On program we just touched on. But as far as like piggybacking on that program, I think that's one of the things that uh, I want to bring attention to, certainly that the ADRC does, is the different classes and uh, different uh, things that you have available there. Correct. Yeah, we have a lot of different classes, you know, and, and just all the different services. I think, you know, Meals on Wheels is probably our most known mm -hmm. service or our nutrition programs are our most known service. But, you know, we have, you know, dementia care specialists who are working with individuals that um, may be newly diagnosed uh, with dementia or they're having families that are, are working with a loved one who is, who's got dementia as that's progressing. And, and so they've developed some classes, you know, uh, brain health and, and understanding, you know, brain health. And they have what they call Topic Tuesdays that they, mm -hmm. they really dig into some of those, those aspects of, of dementia. Um, you know, uh, kind of our one of our big components of our of our role too is you know we have staff that really will just answer a question for you mm -hmm. and a lot of times people don't know what question to even ask yeah and so we have staff that are really skilled and just having that conversation what's going on what what is it that you're you're needing mm -hmm. to to provide you with that support to be as independent and healthy as possible what does that look like um, for support coming in, how do you access that? Where do you go for that? Mm -hmm. um, you know, so really talking about just that basic question. 
you know, some people call and they're like, they're, they're focused, they, know, they think they know exactly what they're asking. Hey, I need this support service. And then through conversation, they're like, oh, yeah, well, I also have this going on, this mm-hmm. going on, this going on. How do I support that need as well? Yeah. Uh, I know in the time that I've been doing this show, uh, my mom is, a, speaking of moms, great yeah. listener, and she, yep. she tunes into the show all the time. Um, in that time, from when I started to now, she has retired in the last couple of years. Yep. And that um, she was not nearly as freaked out by that because she listens to these interviews. And she knew right where to go with the questions she had. And she exactly. went right to you guys. Um, it, it's, it's great to be able to have that resource. It's it's great Absolutely. to be able to have that for people to, oh, it could be panicking. And while so much feels like common knowledge, there's so much that isn't and so many things that can change year to year. Right. So even when, uh, like with my parents, where my dad retired first and then my yep. mom did, so much changed in between that time. Oh, it was great to have the resources of the Aging and Disability Resource Center to be able to go to. Absolutely. One of the most com- complex and confusing things in this world is Medicare, right? Yeah, yes. You know, yes. so it's... Uh, it's got so many different complexities to it. And then as soon as you think you understand it, then they change. Yeah. And yeah. so, you know, we have, you know, staff that are, are really skilled in, in having that knowledge base of what that what that is and those changes. And we have some, you know, we have a Medicare basics class. So, you know, a person that's just new, newly retiring or just getting into that Medicare age, you know, of, of going through that class to really understand what is part A, what is part B, mm-hmm. you know, all those different functions and, and what their coverage is and what that may look like and, um you know, what's best for them in their situation. Another thing that I wanted to mention is uh, not only uh, certainly the work that you all do for our senior population and people out there and that, but also the other side of that, of the people that care for them and caregivers. And uh, I don't know many people who are there and have the caregivers' backs more than the ADRC. And and so much so to the point where so many of us, I'm a prime example of, oh, I didn't realize I was a caregiver until I was literally talking to one of your people. And they're explaining all this. And I'm like, wait a minute. (laughs) It just really sits in. Um, so even on a personal level, I appreciate the organization, but more importantly, uh, the work that you do for our community when it comes to having the back of caregivers. Exactly. You know, and I think people have this, this misconception that caregivers are people that have chosen to go into that profession, yeah. Yeah. right? You know, and that they are, some of them are, and that's mm-hmm. great. We love the fact that people are going into the profession of caregiving, but so many people are caregivers just by a personal situation, mm-hmm. you know, they met out their family member had a, an incident and now they need to provide some support and care for them, or they're just, you know, checking in yeah. on people or providing a meal, you know, that's, that's, that's providing care. And if you don't, as that caregiver, if you don't take care of yourself and have an understanding of, you know, what it is and the impact that you're doing, um, you know, can, you can easily burn out. You yeah. can easily um, start to even be resentful mm-hmm. at times. And so, mm-hmm. Yeah, we have um, staff that are, well, they're called caregiver support coordinators. Yeah. You know, they really um, are there to help support those caregivers and making sure that they understand the resources, understand what it is to be a caregiver, how to be successful, and the biggest component, you know, that self-care aspect mm-hmm. and how to care for themselves yeah. as well. And one other thing I wanted to make sure to mention was the equipment lending and, and the opportunity to be able to do that for people out there. Uh, that has a, a, a big range to it of, of, of ways that impacts this community. Absolutely. You know, so Wisconsin Rapids community, Marshfield community, and in, in the Wood County area, we have lending closets and um, people are able to, you know, maybe they had a surgical procedure and now they need, a, you know, a four-wheeled walker. Um, or a tub bench, you know, instead of going out and purchasing those things, which are pretty pricey, mm-hmm. you know, you can come into our office and we can loan that out to you for, for six months. And so you can, you can try it out. You can, you, maybe it's, that's all you need it for. Yeah. And now you don't have this piece of equipment just sitting in your garage that um, is just collecting dust. Yeah. So um, yeah, our loan closets have been hugely successful. And in the communities that we don't have loan closets, we, we collaborate with the loan closets in those communities mm. to make sure that people understand where to go and, and how to get that equipment as well. Another one of those things that uh, goes, uh, it's kind of in that gray area. We don't yeah. think about in society a lot, exactly. but boy, is that a useful service to be able to have. And, and we're very thankful that you guys do. Just as a side note, if people have equipment that they would like to donate, can they do that? Yep. You know, I, I, would, I would definitely recommend calling first, mm-hmm. you know, because sometimes we get a a flood in where, yeah, you know, yeah. got, we don't have room for it. <laughs> yeah. Only got so much room over exactly. there. Exactly. Yeah, so, you know, but yeah, if you have that equipment, it's in a good repair and you, you want to know where to go with it. Um, and you want to donate it, you know, definitely give our offices a call 
and uh, we can help guide and direct that process. Sometimes that's us taking it in. Sometimes it's referring to a, another entity. Yeah. And Mike, there was uh, one other thing we wanted to touch on before we let you go about a, a special day coming up. Yeah. So we have. Um, Oh my goodness, older. Oh, now I'm gonna I'm gonna blank on it. Aging Advocacy Day. Yes. Um, that's gonna be in May in um, at the Capitol in in Madison. Yeah. And this is really a, a great day for us to be able to advocate for our, our older population with our legislators. So, you know, it there's definitely an aging population. I yeah. mean, I think we've all heard about the fact mm-hmm. that you know the baby boomers and that generation are are aging at this time. And so, you know, making sure that we have the resources and the supports around them to make sure that they stay as independent and healthy as possible. And so, you know, this is a really a great opportunity for us to just educate legislators, mm-hmm. tell them what's going on within our communities, help them understand the, the picture of what we're seeing. And so that, you know, as they're doing policy and policy making and even budgeting, um, they have an opportunity to know really what's going on. So we're really, really excited about about that opportunity. You know, none of us are here without these generations. Exactly. And it's the least we can do to pay it forward, to be there for them in any way we can. And uh, there's a lot of different opportunities for you to be able to do that with our ADRC of CW. Uh, absolutely. Mike, appreciate the time as always. And uh, please say hi to the whole team over there for Definitely us. We well. appreciate the work you guys do. If people have follow-up questions, want to know some more about what we talked about today, how can they get in touch with you? Yeah, absolutely. They can call our toll-free number and we do that intentionally. Even though we steer four counties, we, we want to give you one number to call and one access point. So our toll-free number is 888-486-9545. Excellent. And keep in mind that you can also find out more information at their website, adrc-cw.org, adrc-cw.org. Mike, uh, great talking with you. We'll talk again real soon. Sounds great. Appreciate we'll, it. we'll be back with more Midday Magazine right here at 97.5 FM, 1320 AM WFHR. We are locally grown radio.